they have a vision to help spread the gospel in Brazil and beyond. We talk with Marcelo and Marissa Crivella. Experience restoration with Marcus Lamb at Calvary Temple on Friday, April 19th and Sunday, April 21st. The Holy Spirit takes your prayers into the very throne room of Almighty God. Receive a powerful and insightful message from Marcus Lamb. How do you build up yourself? By praying in the Holy Spirit. Calvary Temple welcomes Marcus Lamb. Find out more at daystar.com slash Marcus. Okay, I am so very looking forward to our special guest today. I have had a love and a vision for Brazil for many, many years. And I have explored, I have prayed, I have investigated, because I've always wanted to have a TV network in Brazil. And I can just tell you this, that we are very close. And I'm just trying to make sure that it's the Lord. Not everything that's good is God. I want to make sure this is a God thing, not just a good thing. And maybe this is another little sign the Lord is sending our way because today our guests are Marcella and Marissa Crivella. They are from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Marcella's dad is the, the mayor of that great city. Of course, Rio is where the Olympics was held. I think also the World Cup was held there. So it is an amazing, amazing city. So please join Joni and me as we welcome all the way from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Marcelo and Marissa Crivella. Bless you. Thank you. Okay, and these guys, listen, their English is way better than my Portuguese. For sure. I am so <laughs> impressed by your English. So let's do this. Let's go on a little satellite trip and let's go and find Marcella and Marissa's house. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, here really? we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> we didn't know about this. It's technology these days. Dun, da, da. It is. Beautiful. Okay, so Marissa, how far do you live from the ocean? Uh, it's not too far. Ten minutes, I would say, driving. Uh, how can you speak English so good? I, I went to Bible school in Canada for a full year. Okay. Went to Word of Life. Um, now, we're in Canada. It's called Owen Sound. It's a very small town in Ontario. That is so awesome. Daystar is on all over Canada. We love our Daystar uh, Canada viewers. And Marcelo, you equally as well speak English. So okay. proficient. How did you learn to do that? Thank you, Marcus. Um, when I was eight, my parents moved to South Africa as missionaries. So I, I learned English from the age of uh, eight onwards. And then after I uh, was able to go to college in California, uh, Biola University. Oh, wow. Okay. It was a real blessing. Oh, well, wow. I know our viewers in South Africa, they are loving seeing you guys today. So I got to ask this question for both of y'all. When you think and when you dream, do you think or dream in Portuguese, Portuguese or English? Or English. Oh, you it's know, a mix, right? I think I've had dreams in English and I've had dreams in Portuguese. You oh, know? At wow. home, sometimes we speak half Portuguese, half English we, because of the expressions. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think um, that's a hard one, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've had uh, dreams in both, Marcus. Well, so, Marcella, <laughs> your dad has the same name. Y'all have the same name. Yes. So how does how do you go from him being a pastor and a missionary in South Africa to becoming the mayor of one of the largest, most influential cities in the world, Rio de Janeiro? That just sounds... Like uh, the parting of the Red Sea. I mean, it sounds miraculous. <laughs> it is. Uh, we feel as a family that it was miraculous. Uh, we feel that it was really God's doing. You know, my father has a heart for missionary work. And and uh, he would, if you ask him, he, he would say that that's what he would want to do all his life. Uh, but uh, he's been involved in humanitarian causes um, overseas. And one of those causes led him to become pretty well known in Brazil. And that's and out of that project, um, he uh, one of the polls uh, for for election uh, 
showed his name. And all of a sudden, th there was a consideration on the table. And I think we felt that God was moving in that direction. Wow. And that's how it started. Well, yeah. I want to hear about that in a minute. But I'm a hopeless romantic, so I must find out. <laughs> now, let's ask Marissa first. How did you two get together and who liked who first? That's, thank you for asking that to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, God, I truly believe that God brought us together. Marcelo found me online I and did. we started a conversation. We were both involved with Christian Camp for, for youth. And that's how we got connected. Uh, but the first time he saw my picture and read my profile, he said, I'm going to marry this girl. And I wow. didn't know that. It was love at first sight. But you, hopefully you didn't just tell her I that. Don't, I don't recommend this. You, I don't, I I don't tell waited. people to go online and find their future <laughs> husbands or wives. But mm. on that specific day, I was, mm. um, I was searching. I said, Lord, please lead me. I don't want to be mistaken about this. And um, there was a, prior to Facebook, there was a different uh, uh, social um, community in Brazil, very popular called Orcuchi. And I was part of different groups. One of these groups is Third Day Brazil, the, the, the band Third Day, 600 members. And I just felt like, I, I think she's in there. And I went into that community and looked through all the profiles and I saw her picture and I, and I read her profile and I said, I'm going to marry this girl. That is amazing. Okay. Now, it's one thing to say something like that, but how did you win her oh, over? That, oh, that, that, that <laughs> took a year. Oh, <laughs> she was a hard uh, yes. case to and, deal and, with, huh? And I, you know, at the moment I thought, I'm going to marry this girl, but I couldn't just walk up to her and say that because she would be freaked out about it. And, yeah. And, and I, needed, I needed it to be, I needed, you know, it to be confirmed. I needed our families to meet. I needed, you know... Uh, God to, to really show us that he was in this. And so um, at the time, in fact, she she liked someone else. So it took some oh, work, Marcus. No. <laughs> it did. So, Johnny, I know you must have a comment about I'm that. I'm just thinking about we have Marcella, Marissa, and Marcus, all these MARs right here. That's right. So, yeah. um, so how did you finally think, okay, well, maybe this is the Lord with um, Marcella? So um, I really struggle with making a decision because I didn't want to choose someone that wasn't from God. And what was very interesting that throughout our, the process of getting to know each other this first year, we talked a lot. And because I was involved in Christian camp, I knew a lot of people, but Marcelo, there was something different about him, about his heart and the way he approached me and the way he approached my family. And it's so interesting because it was all so respectful uh, to the point that when we actually started dating, he first spoke to my parents. Something that we don't see nowadays, but it's so important. This he was such with the a family. gentleman. He was. And uh, the moment was because I liked somebody else when I told him I was struggling with, with that, those feelings. Uh, he said, why do you think this person is not the person God is leading to you? And how can I pray for you? And in that moment, in my heart, I noticed that he really cared for me. He wasn't like, well, you figure out what you're going to do with your life. I'll wait or whatever. He cared. He, he wanted to know what was going on. And, and, and it was so interesting because after that, we started dating. We dated five years long distance. And that process, God, really worked in our hearts, Indeed. patience, learning how to communicate. No games and being true to what you say. So your your ask need, yes needs to be yes and your no needs to be yes. no. Yeah. So. Well, that's a good lesson and advice for many people today, especially if you're dating. Okay, so the irrigation and agrarian project yes. that your dad started, as I understand it, it was using techniques that Israelis use as far as the irrigation part. And we're seeing some B-roll on here. Marcella, tell oh. us about what we're seeing. Oh, wonderful, Marcus. It, it's such a beautiful project that is found at the heart of Brazil in a little town called Irecê, northeast Brazil, that has suffered with droughts for many, many years. Um, the lack of rain just um, creates a, a very poverty-stricken uh, region of Brazil. But um, if you dig wells, there's, there's water underground. And my father, in one of his, um, uh, one of his visits to Israel, was just uh, really inspired by the kibbutz, which are uh, tents that they really mastered the art of um, digging wells and making sure that every drop of water 
yeah. is used in a way that it's sustainable and 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 so we were able to see out of you know the help from the the Israeli uh, technicians we were able to see a piece of 200 acres in the heart of Brazil flourish through that project which is called the uh, New Cana Farms and as you saw in the picture there's a school there's dentist, uh, kids can get glasses if they can't see. Oh, fantastic. It's a, it's yeah, a full 600 project. kids attend, four meals yeah. a day. It's beautiful. And they're, they're able to grow food. Yeah. Because now of they the can water. grow food and now they can, um, they can sell to neighboring towns. And um, it's, they take food home. That's amazing. So that was one of the things that really stood out, probably, that your father was a part of. That's, that's how this whole uh, politics the discussion started because. Um, uh, after that project uh, succeeded, his name would show up in newspapers saying uh, he should be the next governor of Bahia, the state where the project is is uh, located. But um, he wound up being um, a senator of the state of Rio. Uh, he was elected about uh, 20 years ago. Then he served for a, a full term and he was reelected. And now he's been um, the mayor of Rio for two years and a half. You know, the Bible says that a man's gifts will make room for him before kings. So it's obvious in this situation, God took a pastor. He took a missionary. Think about this. He may not have ever been elevated the way he was. If he wasn't willing to humble himself and sacrifice and say, I'll leave my homeland. I'll go to South Africa and I'll minister to the people there faithfully. God looks at faithfulness and God will always honor faithfulness. And you may think that you're doing some thankless job on the backside of the desert. David may have thought that. He's taking care of a bunch of smelly sheep and all, he was getting passed over by all of his other brothers. But God said, I saw David's heart. I saw his faithfulness and I raised him up and I anointed him. God can do that for you today as well. Okay, so Marcella, tell us about Arise Conference. I know this is something that God birthed in your heart and it's, it's making a great impact and it's growing. What is it? Well, I love talking about Rise Up. Thank you, Marcus. Rise Up is, event, is an event that we started about two years ago, um, geared towards young entrepreneurs in Brazil. Brazil has been through a major crisis, economic crisis, but the worst crisis is the crisis of the mind, where you, you, you deal with unbelief, where you deal with uh, feeling insufficient. And, and so we want um, to inspire and motivate young uh, Brazilians to, to dream big, and, and we've got lots of inspiration in the Bible. We've got lots of inspiration, you know, in our faith. And uh, we have an event that's coming up in the 8th of June, and we're expecting 5,000 people wow. to be part of it. And we're so excited this year that we're, we're gonna have Pat Gelsinger, he's the CEO of Dell. Uh, he's coming down from, from uh, Silicon Valley. He's a dear Christian friend and he's going to be one of the featured speakers there. Fantastic. Well, we got a video that tells you more about Rise Up Conference. feel to say a prophetic word to you and this is not something I do very often but I hear the, the Lord saying he is saying to you if you will continue to be faithful and humble yourself before the Lord walk in his ways walk in his word be led by his Holy Spirit then I will raise you up and the work that you do shall exceed even that of your earthly father for I have far more for you even 
than you have already dreamed. And I have placed her in your life to walk side by side, hand in hand. Listen to what she says, because I give her great wisdom and great insight into people that you will meet and discernment. And the best is yet to come, says the Lord. So rejoice Amen. and get excited because I am doing a great work, Amen. says the Lord. Amen. So I just ask all of our viewers to pray for Marcelo, pray for Marissa, pray for his dad. They're the mayor of this great city. And pray for Daystar. Pray that.